Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the June 27th meeting of the Pembroke Board of Selectmen. We'll begin with a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through a live video and audio broadcast on Comcast Government Access Channel 15 and is being recorded for broadcast at future dates. Comments made in open session will be recorded. Uh, does anyone have any announcements they would like to make? Uh, if not, I have a couple. The first one is I'd like to congratulate Selectman Boyle, who was recently re-elected to the Executive Committee of the Plymouth County Emergency Preparedness Coalition. The coalition shares funding and equipment and holds seminars on emergency preparedness for Plymouth County and Norfolk County communities. Congratulations, Bob. Uh, the second announcement is uh, the Department of Public Works Director, Eugene Fulmini, has uh, issued to all Pembroke residents the uh, report on the Pembroke water system. Our water system includes five groundwater supply wells with treatment facilities, three elevated water storage tanks, and approximately 134 miles of water main piping. In addition, we maintain five interconnections with the neighboring distribution systems of Broughton, Duxbury, Hanson, Hanover, and Kingston. If you have any questions about this report or you need another copy, uh, you can get that at the DPW office, 781-293-5620, if you have any questions. Uh, <clears throat> all, all of this is on the east side of Route 3 or on Washington Way. Hey. Oh. Well, they're not safe. Not sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> under scheduled appointments at 7 o'clock, we have Susan Roach, the Recreation Director with a request for a special events permit for food service at their summer concerts on the green. These concerts are free and they start July 3rd and uh, go through the summer until September 4th. Uh, they're looking to have some groups like the Kiwanis, the Lions, Scout Troops or others who would be interested in providing food and drinks and other snacks and they understand that each event will require food service permitting and inspection by the Board of Health. Do we have discussion or a motion? Mr. Chairman, I'll move that we grant to uh, the Recreation Department a special event permit for the Summer Twenty Series, uh, each uh, to be permitted separately and with the approval of the local health agency. Uh, motion by Arthur, second by Bill. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none, 5 to 0. The next item on the agenda at 7.15, a little early, is Art Edgerton. Art, would you like to come up front and talk to us about Pembroke Town News? Sure. You know, most of you follow my name is Art Edgerton, and uh, I'm here to represent Pembroke Town News. This is Rob Adams. He's uh, one of the other people. And our other partner is not here yet, but uh, it's Kyle Harney. Most of you are familiar with him. Um, we're starting up by covering as many town meetings as possible, including the selectmen. Um, and we hope to branch out and we hope we, we are branching out and doing other features around town and stuff. So it's basically a local Pembroke channel that's based on YouTube. So uh, I just wanted to come and present it to you so that you officially know what we're doing. 
there's one thing um, I'm on the Conservation Commission and I realize that that could be perceived as a conflict. So I want to make sure there's always going to be somebody else doing stories about the Conservation Commission. Just to make sure that that's on. Um, and in terms of editorial abilities, it's <coughs> primarily be doing those. Um, in terms of conservation, I'll be fully with the people. So there should be no conflict. Especially with the covering meetings, because it's just covering the media. We will be doing some other stories around town, working on them right now about the Board of Health. And, um, you mean it's the story of the Board of Health? Um, yeah, yeah we, we, we still have a week or so. Okay. Yeah. We're waiting on a couple more emails. But I don't, I don't want to take up any more of your time, but I just wanted to sort of introduce myself in this new position. Well, thank you for coming in. Any questions, Dan? Can you just tell the folks at home uh, where they can find you? So I'm on the YouTube channel primarily right now. We will be having a website in the coming weeks. Um, but you can just search on YouTube, Pembroke Town News. It's pretty easy to find. We're also on Facebook, of course. A lot of uh, residents are going to go Good. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much for coming in and explaining what this is all about. We really appreciate it. Now, we do have uh, some public hearings, but it's too early. So I'd like to go down to uh, board action items. And the first item is a request for Frederick Casavat on the Zoning Board of Appeals. The Zoning Board is requesting of the Board of Selectmen that he be appointed. He's currently an alternate, and he become a full member. Mr. Chairman, I would move the uh, appointment of Rick Cassidy as a permanent uh, full-time seat on the Zoning Board of Appeals. Second. A motion by Arthur, second by Dan. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none, five to zero. Uh, we have another appointment uh, consideration. Well, first, I'm sorry, we have a letter of resignation uh, from Kyle Hani. He is uh, unable to continue in his position on the Pembroke Herring Fisheries Commission. Do I have a motion? Motion, sir. Go ahead. Motion to accept the resignation of Kyle Hani. I'm the Pembroke Herring Fisheries Commission, I'm going to immediately with regret that I was always kind of a lot of special kind of things for me, I'm sorry, he's a regular guy and I'm sorry to be Second. Uh, motion by Bill, second by Arthur. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, five to zero. Uh, the next item is uh, a request from Linda McCollum to be reappointed to the Pembroke Cultural Council. She served two consecutive terms and by rule had to sit out a year. And uh, now that year is up and she would like to be reappointed to the Cultural Council. So the appointment of Linda McCollum to the Pembroke Cultural Council. Motion by Arthur, second by Bill. All in favor? Aye. 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 So uh, we have quite a, quite a list here, so uh, I think what I'd like to do is we'll read the list. If anyone has a question, I'll mark the question and we'll come back to it. And, uh, and we should uh, be able to vote whatever else has not been questioned. So this first group, their term expires 2019. Willard J. Bolton, Jr., Central Plymouth Water District Advisory Board. Brian Van Riper, Community Preservation Committee. He's the Planning Board Representative. Stephen Herman, Community Preservation Committee. He's the uh, Historic District Representative. Robert Clark, Community Preservation Committee. He's representing the Conservation Committee. Scott Blobin, Conservation Commission. Robert Clark, Conservation Commission. Kathleen Toole, Council on Aging. Janet LaVerge, Council on Aging. Carol Watches, Cultural Council. Janet Fagan, Herring Fisheries. 
Rick Madden, Aaron Fisheries, Bob Adams, Aaron Fisheries, Stephen Herman, Historic District Commission, David Mallon, Historic District Commission, William Colliday Jr., MBT Advisory Board, Linda Federico, Recreation Commission, Thomas Crystal, Recreation Commission, Brian Phillips, Recreation Commission, Linda Osborne, South Shore Community Action Council, Patricia Merritt, Town Landing Committee, David Boyle, Town Landing Committee. The next two, their term expires in 2017. Edward Versaw, Veterans Neglected Graves Officer. Andrew Conrad, Veterans Neglected Graves Officers. I have no questions, do I have a motion? Tim and I have a disclosure David Boyle, the Town Committee, and me, my brother, uh, and Thomas Crystal, who's uh, on the Recreation Committee, and my son. And uh, I don't feel I have a conflict of interest, no financial need. Minutes of the Selectmen's meeting of June 6th. Will I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I would move the minutes of the Selectmen's meeting of June 6th. Yes. Yes. Motion by office, second by bill. All in favor? Aye. I'd like a motion on the minutes of the Selectmen's meeting of June 13th. Move by office, second by bill. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All in Hearing none. It's unanimous. Uh, we still have some time on our uh, two public hearings, one at 7.30 and one at 7 o'clock. So I'll move on to old business. Actually, uh, met with a member uh, in the office of this in charge of the security of uh, S Aeronautics um, a couple of days ago. Um, the chief, Lieutenant Bruce Stone, and myself, and the secretary um, met with a number of series of questions that um, some he was able to answer, some he was not able to answer, uh, and referred to the general office. So uh, I had some discussion with the members that were on the committee, and uh, I believe what we're going to do is we're going to do the questions. We want to uh, get the answers to those questions if we need them. We don't have the answer, but some of them are uh, referred to in the FAA. We're going to need to try to get a hold of the FAA, or we're going to look up on the website and see what the uh, the section is on the particular question that we're going to ask. And uh, we're hoping to have it ready for the next work on the CDs. But uh, there probably is going to be a lot of work involved in this, a lot of getting it right to make sure that everybody is um, happy with the answers that are going to be public. So uh, we are working on it. And, um, a lot of um, questions were answered. Uh, we're able to get that to the public as soon as possible. Thank you, Bill. Is there any other old business in the morning we want to get to bring up? Hearing none, I'll move to the town administrator's report. Mr. Chairman, we have a couple of items to bring forward in the public to help the data. Several uh, weeks ago, um, we 
were to discuss uh, the municipal aggregation program in Russia and has taken the lead on, um, according to the rules and regulations that, uh, that allows communities to get involved in this program, uh, we had to replace uh, the plan, the municipal aggregation plan, uh, on the town website for a period of three weeks. And then at the conclusion of the three week period, and the board can vote in the community to set the plan. The training period will expire at 4 o'clock in July 11th, and the board is scheduled to end the day. And so hopefully uh, there will be some comments uh, direct to the website about the program, and then the board can take those into consideration when we have it on your agenda in July 11th. That's what we stand right now. And for those of you who didn't catch it when it was passed at town meeting and also uh, various things that the board had, <coughs> this allows our residents in Pembroke uh, as well as about 10 or 11 other towns to go call the Quarantine House Network uh, to buy electricity cheaper than what they're purchasing now. Um, this is strictly voluntary. Um, it's not a, uh, you know, one size fits all the other. It's for individual homeowners. Uh, they can opt in, they can opt out anytime they want. So, um, the plan itself is on the town website. Uh, um, and review. So, that will be on the board's agenda on July the 11th. Uh, so, on July the 11th, that should be the date that we will allow the automated trash program. And right now, the voters. Have been delivered. <coughs> they are being assembled up at the high school right now and hoping for several days as they're actually uh, assembling uh, about 7,000 cars that are going to be delivered to uh, individual uh, households the next two weeks. And uh, one day, July 11th, is when we think we'll be able to roll out the program. So we'll have automated trash and automated recycling. If you're not real sure about what they your trash recyclables you pick up, you check the town uh, website. There have been some small changes that have been made. Uh, basically, um, what happened was that uh, Mondays turned out to be almost a, a route in town that was almost twice the size of any other day um, during the week. And so, uh, easy disposal from the current carrier um, wanted to spread out the uh, the amount of households covered by each day over a five day period. So uh, there'll be a couple of uh, neighborhoods that will have their uh, trash uh, rescheduled from Monday to another day. So we uh, yeah, have flyers that have been out on the ATP, Lou and Lisa Colony, the health agent, myself, were on Sharon McNamara's radio show. Uh, a week ago, well, here on July 2nd, um, we have uh, mailings that are going out in each trash bill. That is the do's and don'ts of the uh, automated program. And uh, we had circulars that were distributed to all the schools that were taken home, especially by the three elementary school students. So uh, we're, uh, we're excited about rolling out the program on July. And uh, Final thing, if people have not heard of Credit Dump, which is a, uh, a, a website that deals with uh, safety scores for communities, uh, they rated the, the 50 safest communities in Massachusetts with a population of more than 10,000. And I'm uh, proud to say that uh, member of bank number 32. Uh, there were six other communities on the south, south shore, Duxbury, Seachwood, Washville, Norwell, Hanson, and us. And we ranked number 32 in the population. So uh, congratulations to our Federal Police Department. Um, this rating was based on the amount of violent crime per thousand, robbery per thousand, property. Five per thousand, burglaries per thousand. And for anybody's information, you go on that website, number one, uh, 
the safest community in the state is by these, uh, by this organization. So, great. Okay. Thank you, Ed. Uh, just to go back on the trash for a moment, uh, folks at home should be looking for this little pod. You're getting it with your trash bill. It has a lot of good information. So you can find out if your day or pickup has changed, which is on one side, and on the other, it gives some other good information. And as Ed said, you can always go on our website and get even more detailed information. We're trying to get this information out to everybody so that when July 11th comes along, uh, you'll have the new total for trash, the one you've always had for recycling, and uh, we'll start our new program.
and we also have on um, like the tree offering on the screen that apparently a few messages which we post on the but I'm not going to go on the wall. Uh, all supplies and dispensaries and provisions and things. We also have registered pharmacists. And I'm actually a hospital administrator by training and education. I'm not doing a hospital administration. I'm not diagnosing things, but I can be fully involved with the Department of Public Health, for instance, and for instance, it's running and opening facilities, uh, security, pharmacy, libraries, et cetera, et cetera. I kind of look at my team somewhat from the need to work and use technology that I have. And I'll be a pioneers and moving out of service and moving into the company and sure what the management team can do. We can provide more people with the pioneers and do the work of our expenses and the work of our insurance. And I call that the American Secure Group. That was a big one for me. Notice that another term was I'd be happy to do with any um, letter of non physician. I'm not sure where that is. That was the public health. Having more than one facility in it, this is probably probably not. But um, I think one of the things I can achieve in our uh, in our dispensary is not a one size fits all. We want to roll up sleeves and have the safety for the public health and make sure the world is not going to be a comfortable way that all of our people are safe. So that's kind of where I'm going for this one. Yes. That's just that's your question. Well, other than what I say, some of the obvious benefit of uh, those patients that actually can use this type of medical management and pharmacies and things that's uh, less or uh, PTSD and things like that. And just as an aside, one of the things that we do is we take the Center for Disease Control studies on Houston Massachusetts and we superimpose those diseases that are treated with poor terminology. And that's kind of, you know, and, and this helps us A, address the population in a particular area, but more importantly, it also helps us decide on what strains we use to treat certain illnesses. So I think the, the, the obvious and inherent benefit is your own question. Uh, the other thing I think that we have done and I've shared with Barbara and I've attempted to uh, sit down for a vision form is that because we're a not for profit, we don't necessarily do estate taxes and we don't pay federal taxes on the estate and things like that. But what we've done and what I think a lot of organizations are doing is entering into community based agreements, which is really a revenue sharing. We, you know, based on our, our revenue, um, obviously, you know, day one, I think it's going to make some sense to uh, take the of supply off the book. But at some point in time, we probably get to a point where we would be sharing with you, or we're going to share with you, who's going to pay the So I think that's, that's kind of, that's kind of the plan. Um, and then I think, you know, one of the things that's, you know, interesting, and it, it, it varies all over the place, I'm starting to realize. Some of them put them in the starkest commercial districts in the United States. And I've seen some people put them on Main Street, some people put them somewhere in the um, And there are certain um, state facilities so that we can't be in compliance with the communication channels. So it's not the kind of thing that I think would be you know, an eyesore or you know, a high risk children's area. But at the same time, if we are successful in what we're doing, and I, and I think what we would do, is, what I would plan on doing, is if we're successful here, um, securing a letter of approval and a position of this exam, whatever that is, or a board of residents, maybe the board of administrators can actually negotiate. Just to educate you a little bit about the process, it's a three phase process. First phase is application, second phase is management and operations, third phase is site 
like in one month, my team is just coming out of the second phase and making my countries, which if I was a little bit of a it's really about a big questionnaire, background checks on the entire team, and just there's lots of questions they ask back and forth, and that flow of those experience and both. I'm hoping that by you know, July, that we'll be invited to participate in phase three, which is seven. Exciting with each of the groups. In this case, I'm going to do some research and presentation to say that maybe even have members of the group who are not in the region of the country and to have an expression of interest in the property of each of us and to give them a really good history and cash flow analysis of our own market. And then they have a series of questions and answers to talk about and how they look like and so on. So it's a, it's a long process. <laughs> Any other questions from the board? Yeah. Sure. Just a little bit. So when you talk about cultivating sites, I think the question is whether you can put that in the future to get more local information. No, actually, they're wrong. We are not going to be able to do that. We're not going to be able to do that. We're not going to be able to do that. We're not going to be able to do that. We're not going to be able to do that. Yes, yes, I think the problem is that we are the strictest, strictest thing to a country with respect to the government. So, their standards have been so low, they've almost had to issue waivers for people who couldn't. Achieve it, and it wasn't. It wasn't a situation where they couldn't achieve it. It was impossible. They set the standards so high, they didn't know necessarily how to lay out people that could actually achieve it. And this is with respect to uh, you know, mold and parasites and uh, you know other issues, quality, and so on. So um, I think the industry's been working for about six dispensaries on this issue. A bunch of those. You know, I think one of the other things that it's interesting about it really is that there's the following ones in Canal and Ohio, and they had a referendum or a vote about the marijuana there. There were six large investor groups that were going to come in and run the growth facilities to be the highest annual amount. And the people actually voted for that. Even people that were in favor of the medical marijuana, because what they wanted to preserve was kind of a local. Community aspect of the industry. They didn't want big business, big pharma, big tobacco coming in just because that's what they want. And you know, they're not everybody else and so on. So I, I think that's part of the movement, that's part of what people do in trying to do things that uh, they don't have any of you know, other you know, growing experiences in the market. So I think that was a very, very uh, high quality. What do we see in terms of revenues from the community? We just talked about financial and guidance in terms of other ways to generate revenue in terms of is it based on those dollars that we generate that we can get three percent or two percent or five percent or whatever on the kind of market on these? Well, I mean, I, I mean, the big thing, and this is the thing that a lot of people sometimes when people hear about the marijuana, and they just say, I don't know what this is about, it's like some kind of black box stuff from cash, or it's just not. My particular approach, and the approach that I've outlined in the draft that I think is that it's not a lot of money, is that we probably start off as a fixed payable expense, that's $50,000. Year two, that would probably go to rents and sales and things like that. Now, one of the things I'm open to, and I'm also willing to contractually obligated to, is my expenses, my members, if wildly successful, I have no problem with accelerating or saying, I am not the whole one that has to have to work on the song, but those who actually do it are So, whether it's 1%, 2%, 3%, and I think you can restructure the language to each other as well. I mean, we really, we want to be a good, um, a good citizen. Since we 
I mean, there are there were horror stories, and I'm not trying to level set anybody. Horror stories, from my perspective, that you know, out in Springfield where we have larger cities, people were putting ridiculous checks on the table and were selling we all have to do like a purchase from a very sober way to protect us, but that doesn't mean that we're very successful. We both want to know how to do things that basically mean we're not full of people that are trying to replace the people that are in the town. And you have to do all the legalities and all the security and all the ceremony and the rights. Not in this Some sense of exclusivity. And hey, I have a girlfriend or some guy, and they haven't found the location, and they haven't moved through the process. I mean, the more, the more strength you can put in the level of commitment, the more I think myself and my partner can be able to negotiate. One of the concerns we have is that somebody might open up a dispensary right across the street because you refuse to get a reservation on application. And that situation kind of puts us at it, it hurts us and it, and it hurts for everyone. I mean, maybe net net to your town, it's, it's the same. But for me, as a provider, it's valid. So, anyway, there's, there's several factors. I'm just opening that up. I, I'd be thrilled with a letter of non opposition today, um, but I'm hoping that at some point. It could be difficult. And just uh, for, for the public's benefit, to remember this town about uh, four years ago created an overlay district to accept uh, locations in, in these facilities. So we, we already have in place, so there'll be no mystery as to where these places can open up. And they are tight, but they, they tend to be fair in terms of the district and with uh, uh, food and they can open because purpose and play the business. So, so we were cognizant that they were coming to town or potentially coming to town, but they actually need to create the overlay district. So, no request tonight for me. Um, I was born on the agenda. This is the first time I'm hearing of it. So, uh, I hope someone doesn't call for a vote tonight. But if you do, you may vote no. Because I don't know enough tonight. So, I can't be forcing everyone to feel like I'm forcing to a vote. If something so important to, to you and to the town, uh, to someone who's not on the agenda and, and they don't have the information before me. Before me. But I'd like to hear more. Oh, I, I mean, I. I'd be delighted to come back and have a meeting with each of you and to do the self set of applications and specifically bring my team to introduce you in more detail to the team of this because I do have a team. That's what's going to be And I think the general sense was that this process is the boring thing for the letter of non opposition because it's a boring process for me. I didn't think that people well, actually knew it was going to come. Try to educate you on medical marijuana and how it works and how it's better. So, but it just doesn't. You guys never thought about it. So, 
articles in the newspaper that I have copies of where doctors have had their licenses taken away from them because they spend all day writing prescriptions for people and they don't give them an exam. So it's a money business for these parents. And uh, sales are skyrocketing beyond expectations because of this fooling around that they're doing, giving people a prescription without and these people uh, are 
are either using it themselves or they're selling it. Uh, regulations are not being followed, enforcement is poor, and police departments are at fault. Now, I spoke to our police chief, he couldn't be here tonight, but he's totally opposed to that. And he's still going to hear me talk about that. The people in Pembroke who might be interested in obtaining medical marijuana for their health reasons, um, the town of Norwell is done for to have one. It's all approved. Oldbrook, Plymouth, Brockton. So it isn't like if we don't have one in Pembroke. Pembroke residents can still go a short distance with the proper exam and the proper prescription is definitely not going to be out So I don't know what the board's uh, pleasure is. Uh, do you want to table this for a couple of weeks? Uh, do you want to call for a vote on it now? Motion to table for two weeks. Is there a second? Second. Second by the All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? Anybody opposed? I'll vote for it even though I'm not in favor. We need more information. Good discussion is always helpful. Yep. Okay, thank you. Then we'll see you in a couple of weeks. All right. I have to apologize for the people from uh, work. I know you had a 7.30 appointment. Uh, some issues have come up. In your so on the agenda right now is uh, Earth Enterprises. Doing business as Pembroke Mobile at 145 Church Street is requesting a change of manager uh, to Melinda Dickerson. Thank you very much. Can you introduce yourself? Please? I'm Courtney, the district manager for New York. Well, according to the paperwork that we have before us, all of the required paperwork has been processed properly. So unless uh, the board members have any questions, do you uh, we could have a motion. Are there any questions? The chairman, I would move uh, based on your elements, uh, Motion by Arthur, uh, second by Bill. Any questions? Hearing none, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We vote 5 to 0. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. I'm sorry we kept you waiting. That's okay. All right, good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Before you want to ask, let me do something. Um, well, we have a, uh, well, a brief recess is always uh, the title. We do have a, uh, a uh, seven seven forty change of manager. Yeah, can we take another minute and then we can do that? Is that all right? Okay. All right. So the next item on the agenda is uh, the Longhorn Steakhouse is requesting a change of manager. Rare Hospitality International doing business as Longhorn Steak Steakhouse on Church Street is requesting a change of manager from Jennifer Reynolds to Eric Day. You are Eric Day. Yes, Good. Thank you for coming in. Um, anybody have any questions for uh, Eric? Uh, all the people who have said it. Uh, and all we plan on it. So good after this, I'm heading over to the other side. So all the proper paperwork has been completed to our satisfaction. So if there's no questions for Eric, I'll call for a motion.
Second. Second by Abba. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All those hearing none, it's unanimous. We should be best of luck there, and we'll look for you when we go there. Please do. All right, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to request for a recess by Matthew, and uh, we had scheduled at 7 45 by Chief Hill to see you. So we'll uh, let you know. The length of the recess. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. The recess. Okay. Okay. So I'll uh, call an end to our recess, and uh, we have Fire Chief Michael Hill here tonight, who wants to discuss with us. Increase in the rates of the uh, right. 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 Uh, in your report, uh, you mentioned that we currently charge for two different levels of service. Right, the is the police budget coordinator. Right. And now some other towns have a third level. Right. Can you tell me what that third level is? Um, it has to do with how many personnel and how many medicine. So we need to increase the balance of all your testing, you know, inquiry, The more you do, the more you So, can you tell me how, whatever level we provide that, when it's time to build a patient? Um, it is based upon, this is that website, how many interventions are done, and we Chris follows instructions. Um, if you have checked off, that. I'd like to jump ahead if I can to your report to actually the very end of the report. Uh, you're proposing with this increase an additional four people. And uh, is, is that going to have any effect at all on the amount of overtime money that is currently being spent by the fire department to provide these services? Well, the more people person. you have, the cost of the more vacation, the more personal, and more return. So, those types of increases will come along. I mean, sure, right in there, um, we spent a lot of money last year on coverage and spot farms for our series. Um, so, a lot of nice shifts that we could fill.
two other questions, if I may. Um, at the conclusion of your report, a thought that I had I wanted to ask you about. Um, with the additional men uh, that you're going to request that this uh, extra money is full, and if you're adding with the deputy chief, are you planning on having a, like a separate department for the ambulance folks, for the deputy chief? No, nope. sir. Number of men? Or? Nope. Everybody's still going to be cross trained. Everybody's still going to be a, a, a level two firefighter, a level one firefighter, and a new firefighter. So that's what we're going to do. Take the first call that comes in. First call is going to the bus line, and we'll go to the bus line. First call is going to be the bus line. If they have that flexibility, ambulability as well as dealing with the chief staff call. We're going to have to decide this. Just a little bit. Service is something that's out so with all the training that's given to the men, uh, each one of them can work any any particular call. Yep. Anybody can work the that call. Correct. Uh, is the second deputy chief is he planning a certain management structure to have the additional deputy? Uh, well, right now, one deputy handles both fire prevention training and EMS. Separate those two. And then the EMS training, the EMS procurement officer, whatever you want to call them, EMS operation officer, and fire training. Fire operation. We have more time to do this. More than that. I have another question if I may on our mutual aid agreement. Not too familiar with the number of runs and all that, but um, do you do you know how many times we're called to use our men and our equipment to go in another town? We did it 150 times. Now, Kembo, you all know, has three ambulances. Most of the other towns only have two. So. Um, what I was interested to know is uh, how many times do we need to call on other towns to provide aid for us versus them calling on us? That's probably four to one. But I know when we have a, a mutual aid agreement, we have to live up to that. Yep. Oh, that's over. Uh, last week, March goes up. So now we're to come up on so I think my, my last question is one that we may have discussed before. Uh, since other towns have two ambulances, can't we have two and hold back one that would just be used for Pembroke people that would not participate in the mutual aid agreement? Well, we see that again. request. So when we send, we're not going to send an ambulance. We're going to say one, two, three. Yeah, one, two, three. Yeah, and all this. If it's just this whole area until some way down the line, probably after meetings, they all decide that hey, it's better to be a common system. So we can draw out everybody's resources from every town and maybe move the place around so there's not no line, whatever. It's just not yeah. give mutual aid. But so now they're doing that now too. That's not mutual aid, yeah. But it's one whole system as opposed to 26 percent. I don't think we'll like California.
Licensing for a building. Licensing for our dispatch. Software. Not the person's salary. Is, is, uh, that's a good idea. I think the environment is at that stage, it's growth. 
Yes, uh, we have here a uh, request to the Board of Selectmen by uh, Dr. Hill to please update the following amounts from the ambulance billing account. These are bills that were returned in the mail, have been researched, and are uncorrected. Uh, and, uh, I won't give the name of the account, but the total on this one is $874, and the second account is $9,500. $29.06. Also, we have another request for the same issue uh, for another amount of uncollected funds, $12,974.81. And motion to approve these uncollected funds. Yes. Chris has been working on those. Yes. And uh, we have a policy that there is a community of policies. So we're looking for a total uh, of uncollected funds of $23,377.87. motion to uh, move the dating of the scenario. Motion by Bill, seconded by Dan. Any uh, questions? And I'm not interested in getting the new knowledge. Unless there was a lot of delays for you. They must have worked with you. That's what you made up in the top of last year. So that's how you make sure. We have a motion on the second to abate that amount of money. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing that, that's the end of the speech. Anything else, Chief, you'd like to discuss? I was very busy. Uh, Thank you for teaching. Completed our uh, front office. Um, my fault. So I know, uh, I know that, you know that, um, uh, I'm not another deputy and all that, so, uh, we're going to be asking for a certain amount of, uh, dedicated access to the year, or we're going to be asking for a budget for any other issues. Yeah, 
the rest of the main line for the church. Um, one last thing. So, uh, Mike did a good job putting it together this back with all this information. Uh, but do we have a, a, some checks on, on the, the figures from town hall where we check the balance and make sure the fund is uh, indeed getting that money to the board? Well, that's why I think we, you know, the game plan is not to do anything. Yeah, that's, 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 that's why you think. Well, I understand. I just want to make sure we're, we're, we're uh, teamed up with. Oh, oh yeah, I yeah, hope um, all obviously <laughs> carry them. Yeah, yeah, all obviously. So, so uh, <laughs> we turn over checking in my next meeting. Thank you. We have some upcoming issues uh, that we're scheduling on July 11th. A joint reappointment to the Drainage Commission with member Ben Daffinelli. On July 25th, the town, the town, a town request for year end transfers. Does anyone have anything else? I do. Yes. Uh, we are starting off the summer, and unfortunately, I'm getting on track with the wrong foot. Uh, it's three days from the new foot board. Uh, each year, the uh, neighbors who are in open session, and I would speak for them. They have tolerated you know, all sorts of filth, um, trash, uh, automobile uh, language that you wouldn't want your children listening to. You. Um, I'm asking what you do you do if we posted it? Um, you know, from no parking, we posted it. Uh, you know, no editorial facilities on the beach. And, you know, you've got people violating what you can with alcohol law, and it's, it, it's just, you know, I, um, I, I sympathize with them, and uh, they have a sense of frustration. I did speak to the police chief, who was going to more look into the matter of the coach head. Um, it's, uh, you know, talking about having a close potential of a no trespass, and I'm going to keep people out of the area, because the, um, People who spoil it for anybody else have already made their expression. Uh, you know, uh, we have cans and bottles uh, floating to the house and around. Uh, <coughs> and it's just a mess. It needs to be addressed. And, uh, you know, we need to uh, you know, ticket somebody that's fine and we can arrest somebody that's fine. But we need to, you know, set the wheels in motion so that we don't have the same sun that we had last year. Another thing that we can do in the last year is to talk about the, um, you know, you can bring your dogs down and let them run off the leash. You know, I'm, I'm a dog owner, and, you know, I have a dog that doesn't belong on the beach with the kids, and it doesn't belong to strangers. You really need to be involved in the community for a lot of the police.
Yes. 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 Yes.